Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. We're just going to give everyone another minute or so to join. <clears throat> All right, good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining our post symposium virtual roundtable. Um, so, just some quick ground rules here uh, before we dive straight in. Uh, we want to make this a little bit more interactive, so we have some topics we're going to be covering, but if anyone has any questions, we definitely encourage you to type those into the questions panel um, on your GoToWebinar screen here. Um, as far as just a quick background on who American Eagle is before we dive in, um, we are a full service digital agency founded in 1978, originally in Apple II software and networking, built our first website in 1996 and haven't looked back. We're headquartered right, right outside of Chicago. We have other um, office locations around the United States and then also in EMEA, um, specifically London and Zurich. And a little bit more in our Sitecore practice as well. Um, we are a Sitecore Platinum partner. We've actually had that designation when, since Sitecore came out with it, um, probably about seven years ago, um, and we've since held onto it as well. We have a, over 100 certified staff, including the four MVPs on the call today. Just as for some quick introductions, first, I am John Price, been with American Eagle for about seven years. Um, I currently manage our Sitecore practice, and I'm also a Sitecore Ambassador MVP. Ahmed? Yeah, sure. Um, this is Ahmed Dukur. I'm a Sitecore architect at American Eagle. I've been with American Eagle also for seven years, and also been a Sitecore Technology MVP for the, for the last six years. And this is my fifth uh, Sitecore Symposium to attend. Happy Friday. I'm James Gregory, and I've been working with Sitecore about seven years now. Uh, Sector Architect uh, with American Eagle and uh, MVP for the past two years. Hi, um, I'm Mohamed Siam. I'm a solution architect working for AmericanEagle.com. Uh, I'm five-time Sitecore MVP and have been working with Sitecore for the last six years. Great. It's also interesting that we all started the same year as well. Yeah. And we've all been able to put up with each other for that long, so that's good, that's mm -hmm. good news. Good team. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> as far as um, our overall agenda today, we prepared these topics. Um, a lot was announced at Sitecore Symposium. We wanted to make it relevant to everyone on the call from both the IT and marketing side. So we hand selected these topics, Sitecore 10, Content Hub, Sitecore AI, and then also Sitecore.NET Core SDK. It's gonna be a lot to get through in an hour. Um, but as I mentioned, we definitely encourage everyone to ask questions or any other topics they'd like to hear about during our session today. But this was Sitecore's first virtual symposium, like most things this year. A lot of interesting topics, but first off, um, we'd like to cover really on all the announcements and how they affect um, you know, current Sitecore clients as well. So James, how about you kick us off with uh, some of the announcements on Sitecore 10, Azure PaaS, and uh, some of those effects? Sure, yeah, so recently Sitecore 10 came out near the end of the summer there. And uh, it's really an iterative uh, enhancement to the platform. You know, a lot of organic changes, uh, continued improvements and reliability, ease of use. And uh, some of the big broad strokes, you know, are innovation with the, the Content Hub platform, innovations towards the SaaS uh, offerings, 
And uh, you know, one thing that stands out, especially to the developers, is, is the Docker and Kubernetes support that Sitecore 10 has. Uh, but what does that mean for the business side? Um, I think one conversation with that is for hosting, right? Um, if you have uh, hosting in PaaS, uh, one key change with Sitecore 10 is a direction to support Kubernetes, which is an alternate uh, way to handle scaling and um, all those microservices that the XP platform is continually growing in. Uh, so cost is a big factor. Um, if you're on the PaaS platform, costs can quickly rise, and uh, Kubernetes is a way to cut those costs down. Uh, so that's a key deliverable there. Um, there's also the, the ease of DevOps. Um, there's a lot of tooling and a strong community behind Kubernetes tools. So you're able to leverage a lot of efficiencies with the DevOps team. Uh, the other conversation more for the developer side is uh, local development and the ease of installing Sitecore, the ease of handing it off to another teammate to work on the project. And we're seeing a lot of benefits to, to using the <laughs> the containerized approach for local development. Now, there's still the option of on-premise. That's not, you know, that's not gone. Sitecore 10 still has on-premise as, as available option. Uh, you can still use PaaS services for, you know, Solar or SQL, um, but uh, the direction moving forward is, is to no longer support the PaaS offering for the Sitecore web app. Uh, so that, as of 10, that's being deprecated, uh, but you still have the support lifecycle, the two, two years, um, so it's not, you know, you have to switch immediately, but just kind of a heads up that as, as you do your next upgrade, it'd be a good time to shift over to a containerized solution. Let's, let's stick on that topic for a second. So let's say we have a current Sitecore client, they're using Azure PaaS, and that's for everyone on the phone, that's platform as a service kind of went away from the concept of individual virtual machines, more of a cloud-based solution. Um, so basically with this move to Kubernetes and Docker, it's kind of going more to back to the you know, individual VM route where they can host with a third party provider or even in house. Is that correct? Yeah, once you have your solution containerized, uh, you have options of where you host it, right? So you can host it in a public cloud, private cloud, um, there's various ways you can do it. And, and even if you have your solution containerized, you can still host with the traditional on premise as well. Um, that's also mm -hmm. feasible. And another thing with Kubernetes, like with KS, like you're not really tied to Azure. Like you can go with um, Google Cloud or Amazon, AWS. So that's another big benefit that uh, is, uh, you know, that the PaaS offering was having. As far as like speed to market, guys, like so if we're talking Kubernetes and Docker, what what are, what are the business advantages, not just IT advantages, about you know how quick you can spin up an environment? What's some more details around that aspect? Yeah, I, I think one of the key benefits, not just the speed of deployment, because you can really get any system efficient, but uh, I think the testability and the reliability is a key factor that you're able to replicate sophisticated setups. You know, you can think of that, the X Connect and commerce setups, and you can replicate that all locally through dev, through QA, and know that your image is what your image is. And uh, you can also tie into all the support from the Sitecore images and how they're keeping up to date with the operating systems and patches and pulling those through the images. So it really takes care of a lot of the reliability for you. I think that's one of the big payoffs. Great. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, let's talk a little bit about Horizon. So let's talk about what Horizon is. And then <clears throat> again, let's touch a little bit on um, effects of existing Sitecore clients that may be on eight or nine, looking to go to 10 and, you know, Let's talk a little about compatibility as well. So let's maybe first start with just yeah. what, what is Horizon? So Horizon is a basically a, a, a .NET core application that Sitecore came up with to just because with the issues that was uh, we were having with the Sitecore experience, it said like performance, it's too uh, too big and takes a lot of time to load. So Sitecore just wanted like a quicker, easier, more modern uh, interface for content authors to work on. And, content marketers as well. So it's a platform that combines content editing and marketing at the same time. It's lightweight, it has uh, a lot of like uh, a lot of capabilities that the experience editor has. Uh, Sitecore is still adding more features and features to it. I One thing I noticed during this symposium, most of the demos were like on the Sitecore uh, horizon 
So Cycle is definitely pushing uh, in that direction where to have uh, your content editing experience and your content marketing experience happening on the Horizon application. Um, uh, as XA support is coming to Horizon in the future, uh, a lot of major functionalities are will be integrated into it soon. Right. Yeah. Okay. As far as compatibility with older site core versions, say we a client's yeah. on eight or nine, what what is that upgrade? What what do we know so far about that upgrade path and how someone could start taking advantage of that? And can they still use Experience Center with site with the ten series? Yeah, the site code is still didn't say anything about deprecating like the experience editor. Um, so Horizon was it came I think with nine point three, mm -hmm. and it's, so of course like uh, they keep updating it in site code ten, and they're gonna keep adding more features to it on the next feature of uh, the next version of site code and ten point one. Uh, so yeah, it's compatible with nine point three, ten, ten one, uh, ten ten point uh, one. In the future so and that seems like cycle will be like more focused on the horizon rather than that much updating experience editor. Sure. gotcha okay so basically if i was going to summarize horizon is going to be a quicker way for marketers edit con content authors and marketers yeah. edit content and it also basically gives them a view to edit their content while creating personalization rules or maybe testing rules kind yeah. of and what a basic a much more uh streamline interface yeah like you can see like how your content is behaving or like uh, performing on from within horizon you can see like the personalization how it's the engagement values on your content or your images directly from horizon you don't have to go anywhere so that's an easy way of, like like a place like that host all of these functionalities together great yeah Mohammed, anything else to add on the psychor 10 topic um no, not much, but um, I have a lot to talk about on content hub stuff, sure. like what's coming, so. Yeah, sure. So, yeah, so if I was going to summarize the effects of, you know, current Sitecore clients, the upgrade path can still utilize experience that are, and then there will probably be some adoption to Horizon as you go along. So, and it's all included with their existing Sitecore license as well, which is nice, the Horizon features. Okay. Sounds good. So, uh, yeah, Mohammed, on that. On that queue, let's let's jump to Content Hub real quick. So, um, I'll just turn it over to you. Let's explain a little bit on, um, you know, first just what Content Hub is and really what it's there to solve on the site core. Um, yeah, sure. So, uh, yeah, I was mainly interested with Content Hub uh, in new features and functionalities coming. Um, so, uh, we all like uh, now. Uh, know how content issues uh, become a big problem for uh, brands. So these issues can be caused by uh, disparate systems across dozens of business units, uh, content scattered across multiple uh, siloed systems, um, uh, like content management uh, system, lack of control or duplicate content. Um, even when DRM um, uh, uh, or digital rights management um, uh, over content issues, uh, also complex multi-channel or multi-brand requirements and uh, associated governance. Uh, also the use of legacy systems and disconnected systems which lead to inconsistency in, in the customer experience um, across the different uh, delivery ch channel. Uh, also if um, uh, we have uh, inflexible um, uh, content data models. So the solution for all of this stuff is uh, a, a content hub. So content hub uh, provide the single centralized content repository uh, a, which deliver auditability and traceability across all uh, contents and, and assets. So in addition of course to the t uh, technical capabilities to integrate with different solutions. Um, also as we know uh, Sitecore content hub deliver the best value and the fastest time to market because it's a SaaS solution uh, based. Um, also, we have the different products that come with Content Hub. We have uh, we have a DAM, we have PCM, we have DRM, uh, we have MRM that uh, we can utilize uh, at at any point. Great. And touching a little bit on those, a little bit more specifically, digital asset management DAM. So that's basically a repository to store your basically PDFs, videos, um, imagery. Can you touch a little bit more specifically on what CMP, MRM, and PCM are? Yeah, sure. I I can talk about this. Uh, 
so uh, basically if we want to talk about uh, the digital uh, like with the digital asset management or, or dam you can um, have a centralized photos layouts artworks videos uh, in, in one location you can categorize and search um, high volume of materials um, if you want to talk about um, PCM uh, we have um, you can have a centralized and automate the management of maintenance of all customer facing uh, brand content um, CMP, which we'll talk more about its connector in the next uh, uh, slides, uh, with, with CMP you can plan and manage and collaborate effectively with, with the content strategy you have. Um, if we want to talk about MRM or marketing resource management, you can uh, plan and schedule uh, complex multi-layer marketing activities. And there are a lot more to talk about for these products. So uh, we can like have uh, many more sessions or um, round table to talk uh, deep uh, on these of these um, uh, modules or or or, or uh, functionalities in, in content hub great that's a good overview of what is kind of the current state do you want to cover a little bit about some of the new announcements that cycle came out with as a content as a service caas next one Mohammed, I think we got some audio issues. Are you still there? Sorry. I think we lost her. <laughs> can you hear me now? Oh, now we can hear you. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I was talking that uh, there um, are a couple of uh, big announcements related to the Content Hub and the Content Hub uh, roadmap. So, uh, first, uh, we can talk about Content as a Service. So, one of the big news um, is, is Content as a Service, which is a SaaS offer and uh, which is uh, the publishing of data managed in Content Hub um, to Sitecore distributed content delivery platform. So uh, with, with the content as a service now, we have GraphQL uh, endpoints, which uh, uh, make it flexible for de developers to retrieve um, content from Content Hub and deliver it to the different um, uh, uh, delivery channels uh, uh, needed. Uh, more about GraphQL, um, so it's an open source data query and manipulation language uh, for APIs. Um, with, uh, with content as a service, uh, it will allow us to control what data to fetch. And uh, it also, um, um, like an endpoint that can be used to fetch as much as little data as needed. And what does that mean is uh, we can fetch data for rendering um, page HTML in a response to a page load request. Also. We can fetch data to dynamically change a section of a page um, uh, with, with AJAX calls. Um, that's uh, that's one of um, um, uh, the new uh, offers that uh, will be released in the early 2021. 20, uh, um, maybe at this point we start like compare uh, content as a service with a digital experience platform or uh, with experience uh, management so yeah something to uh, talk about here that uh, content as a service is not a competitor to or, or a replacement for the experience platform um, um, two, couple of points to talk about here is uh, content as a service uh, serve as a tr truly head headless and high scalable offer um, but it does not have uh, the same digital experience platform um, uh, uh, features when it comes to optimization and personalization. Also, it doesn't have uh, the what you see is what you get uh, page authoring functionalities. Uh, on the other side, if we want to talk about experience platform, um, uh, we have a full CMS capabilities. We have experience optimization and um, personalization. Um, also, we can achieve headless using uh, JavaScript SDK and uh, ASB.NET Core SDK that Ahmed will uh, talk more about. Um, also, if we want to compare um, content as a service with with Experience uh, Manager, which is the CMS only uh, mode. Um, so, in, in in Experience in Experience Management, we have uh, users uh, control the presentation through uh, Experience Editor or Horizon. Um, but when it comes to content as a service, um, 
uh, it will allow business users to manage their content, but developers need to build the presentation. So they can use uh, GraphQL to um, retrieve information and or content and then uh, uh, build the presentation for the different uh, delivery channels. Great, so a, an interesting use case there is so utilizing Content Hub, markers can basically create, I'll call them data items or data objects that can be exposed through this service that basically a front-end developer or programmer can basically build a web app, a JSS app, or basically any other type of headless solution that's needed. Yep. Um, also, um, we can uh, talk about uh, the CMP connector, uh, which is, um, so we know how the entire, entire content life cycle now from uh, building a content strategy, planning, um, uh, publishing, um, and delivery can be done between uh, Content Hub and XP. And the bridge to connect these two together is the same CMP connector. So um, with the improved connector between Sitecore 10 and the Content Hub, it allows customers to leverage uh, the combined power of uh, both platforms. Uh, simple, maybe dive deep into how um, how it, how it works, like how the CMP connector works. Uh, you can uh, mainly, mainly there are three areas uh, that need to be configured. Uh, you have the Azure Service Bus, the Content Hub, and the Sitecore Content Management. So whenever changes are made uh, to um, uh, the entities in Content Hub. Um, uh, that can be entity creation, modification, or deletion. Using the triggers and actions that we have in Content Hub, we can uh, publish or message these changes into the service um, into uh, the service hub, and uh, the connector will listen into uh, the service bus, and then uh, it will write these changes um, into into Sitecore. And uh, to write these changes, uh, there will be an API call to the Content Hub to retrieve uh, entities information and uh, uh, add it to, to, to Sitecore. Some, some, some data can be sent back to, uh, to the Content Hub through um, uh, like, uh, if, uh, like where, where used message, so where content is being used uh, within Sitecore can be sent back to Content Hub for analytics and tracking. This is probably coming in the future releases. Um, um, so recently, like, um, uh, and John, like, feel free to stop me at any point if you have guys yeah, anything no, to add or to ask. Yeah, let's, let's um, jump to the next slide here real quick as well. I think there's a quick um, example of some of these content insights. You want to go over this real quick? Yeah, sure. Uh, so before before this, um, so the CMP connector that has been released in September 2020 has a lot of uh, uh, cool features like uh, fault tolerant for sync. Um, we have support all simple field types. Uh, we have sync of tags, so we can sync the taxonomy values in Content Hub uh, to a tags uh, that correspond to Sitecore items. Uh, also, we have a related entities, so we can pr bring entities with the relationships uh, from Content Hub. Um, also, other enhanced DAM and media uh, link support. Uh, in the future releases also of the um, um, Content Hub uh, or the CMP connector, um, uh, we have support for versioning, we have support for workflows, um, uh, we have the knowing where and how the content is being used that we talked about uh, using that service bus, uh, so, which is important for editors, authors uh, to make the right changes to the content. Um, um, more uh, more uh, cool stuff or features that are coming in the roadmap, um, things related to the content strategy board in, in Content Hub. So if you don't the content if you don't know the content strategy board, um, uh, it's used by marketers to visualize their content and see how it delivers uh, key elements of their strategies. Uh, we have content insights. Uh, so in the content insights, we have uh, a, a new feature called engagement value, which represents the performance of uh, content. Uh, we have uh, average engagement value by country, by region, which provide insights to where content perform better. Um, also, uh, another feature that is coming is um, content coverage using Sitecore AI. So based on segments, uh, which enable the marketer's team to build the best strategy to create additional content um, per segment. Uh, that's, I believe, pretty much cover everything that um, 
I got from this year's Sitecore Symposium um, uh, for Content Hub. Also, an impressive recap. <laughs> um, it also sparked quite a few new questions. So let's. So Mohammed, I'm going to let you take a quick, uh, quick break there. That was. Thank you very much, by the way. Um, a few questions from the audience here. So, question for us. So, could you talk a little bit more about Content Hub and the third-party video resources like Brightcove, Vimeo? Basically, can Content Hub replace them or add value to their use? So basically integration with third parties like video providers. How can Content Hub play in this space? I think like Content Hub is a full blown like dam solution. So yeah. it will replace these. Uh, it can. Yeah. yeah, it can replace them if they have the ability to like host videos, like any kind of digital assets that you want. Yeah. So I would say like if Cycle has a vision for this is like to have Content Hub as your like only one dam solution yeah. for your uh, company. Yeah, Content Hub can definitely handle th video resources, obviously. Yeah. I think the one aspect, though, is the video player. So we have yeah. Redcode players, we have Vimeo players, we have YouTube players. So there's other third-party solutions that offer video players, especially when we get into like WCAG um, accessibility that are that offer better solutions than the ones that are mentioned in this question, like Redcode and Vimeo. So I think Content Hub, if you're on the Sitecore platform, or even if you're not on the Sitecore platform, the CMS part, Content Hub can definitely host these video units. Then you just have to replace it with a third-party video player, which in the end is better for accessibility anyway. Anything else you guys want to add to that? Yeah, I mean, like Sitecore didn't really uh, get into like the, like how you would integrate videos with Content Hub, but I would say like you know like uh, you can have like any HTML5 compatible like player that you can integrate with. So and Sitecore will probably have its own like integration uh, for this kind yeah. of functionality. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder if it might be more likely to keep your video in the other third-party um, video tools, but just tag your content and kind of link that in so that if you want to do different videos for different segments or just how to how does that fit into your taxonomy of content, um, I, I kind of see more commonly used that way. Sure. <clears throat> yeah, that, another couple questions. Great. Um, question on Horizon. Is there still a WYSIWYG editor? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it definitely have a WYSIWYG editor. It has most of the functionality that you like use day to day, like personalization, adding content, add, adding data sources, adding like pages, editing these pages. Uh, all of that uh, exists within, within Horizon right now. Uh, when I was saying that Sato was still adding more functionality to it, I'm also saying about things that are you know on the advanced side, like SXA support, things like that. Uh, so Sato is still working on that. Uh, that area. Great. Yeah, I think another way to think of it, especially with SXA compatibility coming out, is um, it's just it's a new way just to edit content, right? You still yeah. have your common components. Um, you still have your going to be now SXA components with drag and drop and things along those lines. It's just a new way, faster way, more efficient way to edit content, but also see data and analytics all within the kind of same interface. And you can actually see like the Horizon have this simulator where you can actually see your pages and content within different like a large set of like devices that can sure. uh, show you like mobile laptops all kind of like uh, resolution and dimensions that yeah. are possible out there yeah and I'll, this is kind of a ploy at the end but i'll mention it now we're going to be coming out with a series of videos kind of highlighting the actual use of these new features um so everyone that's interested definitely can will definitely be posting those as well instead of just talking about it today um <clears throat> i'm gonna jump to the next question another good one um, is Content Hub only a SaaS solution or can it live within our Sitecore instance? <clears throat> so I can take that one. Um, it is a, a, a primarily a SaaS based solution. Um, I don't want you to think of it as another product, but it really is kind of its own standalone solution. Um, as I mentioned before, there's a lot of Content Hub users that may not use the Sitecore CMS. So Content Hub plays really well just in the entire, I'll say, space of web content management. So it is a SaaS-based platform, um, and I have not seen an on-premise on -premise, um, implementation of it. It is a space, primarily SaaS-based. Um, another good question. Um, are there any general guidelines on Content Hub licensing that are available, or should we talk to our Sitecore representative? So another great question. So as you can see on the left hand of our slide here, there's really four or five primary um, elements of Content Hub that can be purchased individually or packaged. So 
Um, there's things that are factored into licensing, like number of users that can log in, um, number of channels, things like that. But this Content Hub is broken into a DAM solution, this content marketing platform solution, um, MRM, PCM, and web to print. So you don't have to purchase it all. You can actually purchase individual pieces of it, and then you can actually grow into it. Start with one and go to more. As far as pricing, that is definitely something we could help with, working with your Sitecore rep, or you can write, reach out to your Sitecore rep um, directly to kind of get all the um, elements of pricing that are needed to get you a quote. <clears throat> um, another few questions. Um, is Horizon still on Speak? Mm, no, Sitecore uh, killed Speak in a way. <laughs> so uh, Horizon is actually like built on .NET Core, mm -hmm. so like they just, started fresh with everything it's not the same as uh the experience editor. So, so all the issues that you guys had before with experience editor are like cycle is trying to like fix all of that in the horizon if you look at kind of cycle's product roadmap over the last couple of years with the late dying series and now the 10 series even it doesn't matter if it's commerce or the dxp solution performance is kind of at the top of their roadmap yeah. you know tr getting rid of some i'll say of the legacy um, code, looking for more of speed, speed of market, you know, the introduction of SXA a number of years ago, it's all kind of going in that direction. And the entire Kubernetes and Docker is just kind of the, 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 the carrot on top for deployments and being able to provision environments and you know, replication quickly. Um, so, so, yeah, and maybe to add to that question, maybe like, uh, like the question was maybe like, ref also like referencing, like if they, if someone already have some extensions like extra buttons, customization on experience, etc., uh, how do they like move that to Horizon? Uh, Horizon does have extension capabilities. Uh, you can add buttons. You can add some of that. It's not to the same level of extendability as or customization as the experience editor, but Sidecore will will have uh, will have that option in the future to add more and more customization to it. Great. Yeah. Another good question. So. <clears throat> This is likely from an existing Sitecore client. So, what kind of performance gains can we expect to see in Page Editor, or can we see in Page Editor with Horizon? So, basically, moving to Horizon versus Experience Editor, what are some of the performance differences? So, it might be tough to benchmark, but I'll, fa I'll take a first stab at the answer. So, um, with Experience Editor, there's a lot of things being loaded in the background. There's a lot of um, Sitecore clients out there that may not even realize. Sitecore is doing on-the-fly calculations for A-B testing and personalization. Um, that if you're suffering from a little bit of, um, I'll say, a longer load time in Experience Center, those can be all disabled. Um, Horizon's really meant to be able to progressively, you know, very fast initial load and progressive, progressively load those elements behind it. So, you know, as far as a benchmark, you know, it should be down to you know, a matter of seconds um, opposed to maybe five to ten, depending on how large the page is. Um, and if you have those calculations turned down. So the idea is click the button within a few seconds, it should load. Yeah, it's certainly been refreshing yeah. to have a snappier interface. Yeah. Okay, another question. Uh, do you think Sitecore will have Horizon mature enough to kill Experience Editor by Sitecore version 11? That's a good question. Um, I, I think that like at some point they will um, I think they will. <laughs> it just like seems that's the road that they're gonna go with in the future. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, it, and we did see that update for the launch pad. Yeah. As yeah. well, kind of using that Horizon UI oh, yeah. for the launch pad. Yeah. Too. We do we do have some screenshots on that. We'll send the deck out after this instead of scrolling through it. But yeah, Sitecore's got a whole new UI for the launch pad. I think the you know, for this question, um obviously I think experience editor is gonna be supported up to a certain version, but the idea is Horizon is going to eventually replace Experience Center so if I was going to venture a guess, just with what we've seen on the product roadmap and just what we've seen with the developments supported up until a certain version, then Horizon, I think will trump uh, Experience Center. Okay, really good question. So what is our company's preference, AmericanDuo.com's preference when creating a new Sitecore solution on 10 when it comes whether to use JSS or headless, that's a good question. So if we're going to spin up a brand new instance, maybe we can talk a little bit about what are some of the things we consider um, when we go with the development approach of SXA with maybe JSS or do we go headless? What, what? Is, is the question um, JSS versus .NET Core SDK or is it what's your option like SXA versus I, I think it's. I, 
the way the way I would take it is it's a little bit general. So I think we can maybe mm -hmm. dissect yeah. it into what may what are some of the considerations we would look at yeah. um, while making that decision for an individual client. Yeah, I mean, if, if you're going towards a headless approach, um, if you've already made that decision, that makes sense for your solution. Um, I would lean more towards, you know, who's developing it, what's their expertise, right? Because you've got options. You could you could use a JSS if you're familiar with Angular, React, or Vue. Um, if you've got more backend developers, they might be more comfortable with .NET Core because it's more like C Sharp. Uh, so there's there's that that space there. Um, the benefits is the scalability. You can have more rendering nodes, kind of thing. Um, if you're debating like just what's the way to do Sitecore, I think that Sitecore SX today with MVC is still kind of the bread and butter. I mean that's just the tried and true path. Um, you don't have to worry about a lot of um, difficulties with performance and, and rendering server side. Um, so I mean there's just a lot of options. I think it, the, the great thing is with options is you can pick the one that makes sense for you. So it's really you know, what are your goals? Um, who's supporting the the site, and and pick one that makes sense for your solution. Well, we'll stay on this topic for another another second or so. So, I mean, JSS does have performance limitations currently with the amount of traffic. There's only so much that can be processed. So, um, especially with PaaS going away, where you could easily scale up a CD environment, um, JSS does have performance limitations as far as load. Do you may want to just talk a little bit about that just so the audience is aware what that is? Yeah, I mean, there's solutions for it, but it is an issue, right? So um, for that server side load using a, a JavaScript library, uh, React or something, you know, th there is that bottleneck of the node server rendering at server side. Um, there can also be complications of that node server communicating with the backend Sitecore endpoint as well. So there's just another, layer of time and, and troubleshooting and tuning to address delivering your page. So it just adds to the complication. Um, once you get it right, it, it's it's nice, you can get it really fast, but there is another extra layer of complication there. Uh, and for medium traffic, you know, not as big of a deal, but if you have high traffic sites, it's a bigger deal because then you might need 20, 40 nodes just to serve up the pages quickly. And we're going to talk a little about Sitecore, .NET Core, and SDK here in a little bit, and that may be another preferential way to go down as well. Um, anything else to add to, to kind of general um, considerations or kind of development recommendations for certain situations, or should we wait till we get to SDK, you think? Right. We can wait till we get to SDK. Yeah. We'll come back to the question, though. That's a really good question. Yeah. Okay, that looks to be all the questions for now. Again, love the questions, keep them coming, those are great. Um, going back to just kind of our general talking points, right? We've talked a lot about content on Thanks, Mohammed. Um, there, it's, a, it's a huge product in itself, so there's a lot to talk about. Um, but Sitecore AI, Sitecore AI, I was, believe, was announced the last Sitecore Symposium. Yeah. The years are blending together at this point, but um, it was announced at last Sitecore Symposium. A lot of really cool announcements, right? So. Well, the first one I will cover is basically in 10.1, um, AI is supposed to ship with Sitecore 10.1. So what that means yet, I think, is a little bit still ambiguous, which is perfectly fine as it gets um, kind of figured out. Um, but that's the nice thing. If you're an XP user of Sitecore, it sounds like AI will be included when you upgrade to 10.1. Um, but just to kind of take a step back from that, you know, what is Sitecore AI? And, you know, kind of, you know, our opinion or our um, I'll say our observation and uh, why would someone use it? Yeah. And uh, before I get to that, I think yeah. it, it will be like supported within Sitecore 10, not only 10.1, but it's going to yeah. ship with 10.1. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, yeah. 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 Uh, it is supported currently. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, just like you said, Sitecore uh, AI, they announced it last year. They were uh, talking about how they were working with Microsoft part, like uh, the website for partners, how they were been, have been using it, and this symposium they like were like adding more details how like uh, the Sitecore AI was helping the Microsoft Partners website to like deliver personalization in a much faster way uh, to uh, to the visitor. So basically, what Sitecore AI is like previously when marketers wanted to like personalize content, they would have to go into each page, they would have to select the content or component they want to uh, personalize, they want to add, and you know the 
the most consuming time like this thing is like to add conditions and rules and say like okay show this one like someone is coming from this segment or like showing show this image if someone is coming from this region so all of that cycles try to resolve that by having a ai doing the personalization for you so you basically go select a component add all the variations that you want and say like i want the personalization to run based on like how the bounce rate is or like how the engagement value is of these uh, content uh, pieces and cycle ai would does it say it, it, it's, it's magic it will basically try to figure out the best content to serve like uh, the users or it's not going to have only one winner too it's going to have like multiple winners based on the segments that the ai will create for the visitors so if we're just going to break really kind of summarize this so we have a hero a hero component on an interior page yeah. let's say it has a title a description and a button a marketer can go in create let's say a couple variations right yeah. maybe with a different image different description different uh you know call to action different link destination depending on what they may want the user to do and basically with sitecore ai running sitecore ai will again start to familiarize familiarize itself with who the different users may be yeah and then which and then those different segments that it breaks out which piece of content works for them yeah exactly. so it almost takes number one it takes the guesswork out of it but number two it takes all the overhead for the marketing teams away from it as well yeah. so i mean there's a lot of site core clients that you know may not have the, a robust digital marketing team or a martech position you know this basically requires some content creation and then you can let this run in the background yeah. so the barrier to entry to the experience platform and you know experience marketing and personalization this is basically Sitecore solution for that. Because over the last couple number of years, there are a lot of clients that have a tough time just getting into that kind of ground level. And this is one of those solutions for that. Yeah, yeah exactly. And uh, one thing like when Sitecore came, first came out with this, uh, there was a, a restriction like you have to have like a really high traffic on your website for this to work. But now like there is no yeah. limit for how much traffic you need to have on your website. So yeah, that's huge. As long as you have like one visit, <laughs> yeah. your AI can get okay. in. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Nice thing about that as well is again you gotta grow into it. If you're if you're a growing business, let's say you start with a few million visits a year or yeah. sessions, um, as you grow, the those machine learning algorithms are just gonna get better with time. It's all based on data. So it's something you can grow into as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and I think you you might have it in the slides, but Microsoft actually won an award for like them using the Sacro AI mm -hmm. um, because uh, like the way they have been using it and the way that it has been helping them to deliver personalized content. Uh, yeah. So we're gonna, let's let's jump to again. These slides are kind of grainy because it was a virtual symposium and the bandwidth on some of these videos was a little low. So Mahat or Ahmed, tell us a little bit what's going on in this slide. This is a screenshot. From the Sitecore AI, I'll say interface. What's going on here, and basically, what does it pertain to our marketers for? Uh, I can. I'm having a tough time it. <laughs> I, mean, I didn't know that I had. Mom, do you want to take this one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. I can talk about this. So, yeah, this is a screenshot from Modern Horizon, and uh, these are the data sources or the different data sources that uh, you can choose. And um, uh, on the bottom right of the screen, you can see there is a auto personalization target or, or a checkbox. So all what you need to do is to select the different variation or the data sources uh, you want for this component and then enable the auto personalization. And then Sitecore AI will select the winner uh, based on audience or personas, as Ahmed explained. And let's jump to the next slide as well. Let's see what the next one's got for us. How about this one, Mohammed? Let's take us a little bit through and kind of content AI within Horizon. Yeah, this is um, yeah, this is also another uh, screenshot from within Horizon where um, uh, Sitecore AI or content AI also will uh, give you suggestions of uh, what um, uh, data sources you can or yeah, content you can use for for the components. So yeah, this is all um, coming with uh, Sitecore uh, AI. Right. I'm gonna jump, Muhammad. I'm gonna jump to slide uh, 17 here. <clears throat> yeah, Joe. Let's go back one. And it also has its own entire analytics dashboard to kind of help understand what's going on. You want to explain this a little bit? Um, yeah, sure. So here, what we have is the different uh, components and uh, the Sitecore uh, AI. Um, uh, standard or premium 
uh, will show you like uh, some statistics about the different data sources that have been uh, selected for the different audiences. Yeah, and like, uh, like yeah, this is the standard view, and I think Sitecore in the premium offering they will have like a, a little bit deeper like uh, like details about the, like how each component is acting or like how the personalizations work. They haven't shown us yeah, the like, AI insights yeah. dashboard and deep auto segmentation is basically what they're calling it. So yeah, yeah, they have like a yeah. more advanced one for the. They didn't show it in the, the all of the these slides from the demos were like the standard one too. Yeah. Yeah, I think the nice thing as well is all this data. I mean, a lot of our clients use Power BI. It's very mm -hmm. easy to get data out of Sitecore into Power BI. All this data is also very easily um, able to export to a BI tool like Power BI or Tableau yeah. or whatever someone may be using. So easy to get this data out. All right, let's see what we got next on the docket. This is one more this example demo shot that we had just this content coverage we can probably skip past it for the sake of time for right now um let's jump to slide 20 here so let's go back up there you go yeah yeah so site so this kind of relates to that last question we had you know the, the development options now that Sitecore has are providing many more a lot of great options depending on what types of team you have so let's dive into a little bit on Sitecore.net Core SDK. First of all, really, what is it, and then yeah. you know, when do we use it? So let's jump to slide 21 and let's get started. Yeah. So, as again, as part of the Sitecore effort to move into a SaaS world where they can have their headless uh, SaaS offering, and then you can use uh, like JSS or .NET Core SDK to like deliver your application or website or like build your own SDK and just utilize the Sitecore Headless API uh, and you can use. So one of these uh, SDKs that Sitecore came up with, like they started with JSS, so you can build that um, your website using JavaScript frameworks and you can, they have a, an SDK that, you know, like make it easy for you to like add placeholders, add component, like, you know, build the website the way you're supposed to build it with Sitecore. And now Sitecore came up with the .NET Core. So you might ask, like, why do I need to like use .NET Core SDK versus JSS or versus just Sitecore um, MVC with Razor? Uh, it's really like, again, a question that like, what, what really fits your organization or development team? So basically, do you already like, you're, are you already working with .NET Core? That would make the most sense for you, like, just to keep within the same technology stack that you're already familiar with. Uh, another thing, like between, like to use the Sitecore.NET Core SDK versus JSS, I would say like you have more business logic in your like in your application, and like the .NET Core is like you know you're using C# -sharp and it just allows you to have more uh, more complex business logic in the code behind that you have versus JSS. I would say. Uh, another thing, like you know, you, your developers are more familiar with the .NET world than JSS, so that would make it makes it more easy for you. Uh, another ad advantage of like going with uh, a headless approach, I would say, like the upgrades. Uh, imagine you have one content delivery uh, instance, or like if you're in the future using the Sitecore SaaS offering, uh, the upgrade is basically just updating your Nugget package for the SDK, and that's it. Like I'm gonna upgrade to the next one, and you probably have a procedure to upgrade your uh, content delivery, but the effort is going to be much significantly less than uh, upgrading your entire website that is using the, you know, all of the Sitecore APIs. Uh, so what is exactly Sitecore.net uh, Sitecore Core SDK? So it's basically an SDK uh, that can communicate back with the Sitecore uh, layout service or their headless uh, services. Basically, like you can retrieve all of the placeholders or the, all of the content that you need, all of the rendering, and it comes back with, uh, it gives you the functionality to add content on the website with editing functionalities, with uh, personalization as well, things like that. So all of the features that GSS currently supports, like that .NET Core SDK is supposed to support as well. See, we have another question here. Yeah. Let's um, take a pause for a second. So thank you. Good overview so far. All right, so we have another question. We're gonna jump back to AI for just a second here. So interesting question. So 
Sycor, does Sycor AI have a dependency on solar or a different indexing engine? It's, it's a SaaS offering. It has uh, nothing like, you don't really need to do any coding or configuration on your site um, as long as you, the, the AI is included in your license, this should work for you. It's, it's, it doesn't run on your instance, it runs on the SaaS, so that's why yeah. it's... Uh, yeah. So, you know, if someone's, I'll say, this, for this example, clients on-premise, um, individual VMs, um, they're gonna, they were upgraded to Psych or 10, one, 10 or 10, one. Um, how simple do you think it would be to connect their site for instance to AIs at an endpoint? Is that's basically the idea, right? It's, you're not setting up additional infrastructure on your side. I think it's part of yeah. the question as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, I mean, like if you have the license to support AI in your, you know, it would be just, uh, it will show up in your instance that you, you have the capability to add the personalization to your instance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, I don't think you will have to do any code behind changes on sure. your side. Gotcha. Okay. And one thing to note, uh, and they, they mentioned this in the previous uh, symposium, but they, they, again, they mentioned it again. So you can have a hybrid personalization where you can have your like you know traditional personalization and say like, well, if this doesn't work, just do an, uh, an auto personalization with Cycle AI. So basically run your conditions, if you have like, uh, specific conditions you're going to want to run and then like I said otherwise run uh, auto personalization for me so you can have this kind of hybrid uh, okay. approach to it that's great to know yeah fantastic all right we've got another question here <clears throat> all right got a couple of them so all mm -hmm. right so for .NET code S I believe it's .NET core SDK can we combine our existing helix solution with .NET framework or are there any specific standard mitigation steps we need to follow to make the .NET framework the .NET standard first and then include .NET Core, include Core together? So basically, can we run a hybrid solution with existing um, and new? The .NET Core, it has to be like its own. That's the whole idea of like having a headless uh, solution where like you just or you're just using .NET Core to build your website and just you're re utilizing the API so you can still you have your website that is run on like ASB.NET and PC, but if you want to expose the your headless endpoints from your for your content and build a .NET Core application uh, somewhere else, you can do that. If that's the question. It's gonna be like a different but, site. Like, yeah, this is just they're gonna be a different it could site. Be posted from the same instance. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, and what we've done before as well is you know you can have. You know, a single domain, right? We think of that as mm -hmm. a site, but you can have a single domain with basically multiple site nodes. One could be running on legacy. Then you mm -hmm. can gradually start incorporating this new headless site. You may have duplicate yeah. things like navigation, footer, things like that, but you could run a hybrid, you know, single domain with multiple nodes, one legacy, one new. So that that's an option. May not be the best for most, but for some, yeah. but that is an option as well. And the solution will be separate. Like Sidecar also like but I think they have a demo uh, for like how to use Helix with the .NET Core, how to like, you still can like use the same guidelines you used before, like how to like structure your solution. But in terms of like you're deploying your .NET Core like solution to your .NET Core application. So uh, they're not gonna be mixed together. That okay. makes sense. Okay, another related question. So with .NET Core SDK, does this mean we would be able to host a CD, a CD instance in a Linux VM or, or even better, a Linux container? Uh, yes, I mean, we're not gonna call it CD. The idea is like, just call it your website. I mean, yeah, you you have a, uh, you know, your CM and then you have like multiple applications that, you know, you can have them run on a .NET Core. And yes, the idea is like, you can run it on, it's a cross-platform, it's built on top of .NET Core. So it's already cross-platform, cross it's cloud and container ready. So that's what Sitecore like was, uh, Demoing for us and uh, during symposium. So yeah, so that node would still talk to a Cycor endpoint, yeah. such as a CD. Yeah. But it'd stand in front of it. Yeah. So take that yeah. rendering. Okay. So looks to be all the questions for now. So I'm at jumping back to .NET Core SDK. Anything else you want to highlight? Um, anything else? Uh so if you're planning on using SXA, SXA is not gonna, it's not supported yet. I mean, I'm not sure like what's. I think Sidecore wants to have that supported at some point. 
but um, I think both GSS and uh, .NET Core SDK doesn't doesn't have this SXA support as of as of yet. So that's something you need to have in your you know decision making uh, process uh, if you're not really planning to use SXA anyway. So okay, sounds good. So okay, quick time check. Um, we've got five six minutes left. So um, let's jump to our what's next. So. It's like we're sharing a bit of a roadmap for what's coming in 2021. There's a lot of uh, topics here, um, but just a couple ones we wanted to point out that may affect the let's see, the wider net of individuals on this call. So first one is SXA, Cycle Experience Acceler Accelerator integration with Horizon. So basically currently, um, not SXA is not currently supported with Horizon. The idea is the next step is having all SXA components, or majority of SXA components, or all SXA components be compatible with Horizon, is that right. correct? So currently, you know, you're able to do page editing, like you can edit the content of the pages in Horizon if you have SXA, but it's a little limiting because you can't do any of those design features or any of the, uh, you know, the extra issues. parameters yeah. and the grid. You know, there's a lot of limitations, uh, so it really isn't feasible to use it right now unless you're only doing content editing in page editor. Right. But yeah, looking forward to that yeah. release. Okay. Another one I've highlighted up here is improve cold start time. I mean. Again, going back to the topic of being able to do things at speed, right, or with speed, right? So one thing Cycler's focused on is improved cold start time. What does that mean, guys? You want to take it? <laughs> you want to calculate the savings? No, hey, uh, <laughs> this is you know something that any developer would want. Uh, every time you make a change and you have to compile DLL, recycle the app pool, it could take 30 seconds, minute or more. Uh, and it also, um, you know, if you've got something you're deploying to an environment, a production environment, the time that it takes to start up the app. Um, if you want to scale up a new image, the time it takes to, to get that image warm and ready. Uh, so definitely uh, encouraging to see that on the roadmap. Great. Okay, so so everyone on the, everyone on the call, um, that's, let's jump to the last one. Yep. Um, we had, that's the majority of the content we wanted to cover in this hour. So hope everyone found it useful. I appreciate everyone joining. As I mentioned, if you have any other inf or questions, like some free, um, additional discussions, you can definitely contact us here. If you don't already have one of our emails, you can definitely contact us at info at AmericanEagle.com. Um, and as I mentioned, we're going to be releasing a series of basically demo videos of showing these features and functionality over the course, I'll say, of the rest of the year into early next year. So. Um, talked about a lot today, but we're going to kind of show it in action, just kind of give everyone a bit of a preview. Um, and especially on the hosting front with Kubernetes and Docker, um, we're going to be having probably another just session just on kind of the ramifications on that and how someone could migrate. So stay tuned for more info there. We do have a few minutes left, so I'm going to see if there's any other questions before we jump here. This is a really good question. So we do have a good question on a client that may be on Sitecore 8 or 9. They don't have SXA. So does a client need to adopt SXA before going um, to Sitecore 10 and 10.1? So sure. Uh, so yeah, if you're, on, if you're on a different version of Sitecore and you want to go to Sitecore 10, you do not have to adopt SXA. Uh, SXA is just an optional implementation it's an opinionated implementation of your you know templating structure and, and different tooling options so no you're not forced to go to sxa um, sxa is useful if you're kind of rebuilding a site or adding a new site and you're looking to gain efficiencies uh, that's when you consider using sxa okay guys really appreciate your time everyone on the phone thanks again uh for attending here hope you found this useful um at the end of our session, um, your, a survey is going to pop up, uh, pop up at the end. So um, any feedback you have for us, we greatly appreciate it. Um, but that's it for our, our roundtable. So again, thank, thank you for your time and uh, hope to be talking to you all soon and um, enjoy your weekend. Thank you all. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks.